Hello everyone, this is No More Worlds. Trying out Imperator Rome, or Im Imperator Rome. I, I don't actually know how you say it. I, I think it's Imperator. But uh, this is a game I haven't played in God knows how long, because uh, Paradox stopped supporting it. Uh, I played this on release. I, I bought this on release, and then they changed the game up a lot, and, and then I didn't know how to play it as well. Not that I ever did, I'm pretty bad. Um, but I decided to dive back into it. I, I did play after some of the patches, including the Marius or McKellian. I, I don't know which patches there were. I think it was 2.0. Uh, and the mechanics have changed up a bit. But um, I'm going to try Gnosis here. I've watched a few videos, uh, including one by a YouTuber called Dan is Stoned, who I uh, used to watch back in the day, just to get an idea of the mechanics for what I'm going into. Um, but I think I've played Creep before. Uh, I played Sparta before. I don't generally play any of the large nations um, in any Paradox game. I don't, I don't like starting large uh, because it's much more fun to easily carve out what you want. So let's dive in. Now I should mention, you know, Alexander the Great's uh, Argied. Uh, this gives us, you know, its, it's starting point is basically right after Alexander the Great's death. It's 450 BCE. Uh, the Diodochi or Diadochi are all the successor states. You have Macedon or this might be Ptolemaic Egypt. Uh, you have Seleucids. Um, whoever the hell these people are. Um, Antigonid over here in Ionia. Um, Macedonia. And then that's Alexander, who's recently passed, obviously. I guess it's only like a little bit after his death, so that is fine. The Dias cast is going to be a huge bit of... Um, so, uh, Let's dive into this first. We're Gnosis. We're basically the large-ish city on uh, the Isle of Crete. Greek mythology, uh, King Minos of Crete built a palace at Gnosis with a labyrinth for his son, but the head of a bull and the body of a man, now called the Minotaur. Uh, after the fall of the Minoans, Crete was settled by Greeks from the mainland, and Gnosis grew to become one of the most important cities on the island. The city had two ports, Amenisos and Heracleion. Uh, Gnosis has recently engaged in frequent hostilities with the smaller city-states of Lyctus to the east, forcing Lyctitians to appeal to the mainland Spartans for help. Time to make history. So we're going to stay paused for a second. Um, now, I want to play as Crete because I, it's, it's relatively safe. I, safe. I think it's kind of a bit of a starting area. Uh, you have plenty of territory to expand into, but I have to be clever because I did uh, test out playing this game before. I tried to record. I was Marsilia. Uh, the, you know, the Greek colony states up here, uh, and I can't publish that video because I'm not that into public humiliation uh, and how poorly it went uh, trying to expand into these uh, Gallic tribes. <laughs> so we're going to stand with uh, Crete here, and we're going to try to unite Crete. There's a mission for it, so that should give us the claims we need. We do need to make claims uh, to be able to declare Cassius Belli just war and not have massive debuffs against us. Now, one thing to go into is, if you're not familiar with Imperador... Im Imper uh, Imperator Rome. Um, it's very, it's a very good mix of most Paradox games in terms of systems. I feel it has a lot of the military stuff you'd see in Hearts of Iron, including unit weight. Um, it feels very EU4 in style of map and a lot of the choices, but it does have some of the character interactions of uh, Crusader Kings. So it's an interesting mesh of everything, uh, and it stopped being supported, I think, because of a low player base, but to be honest... That's several Paradox games, like Victoria 3, which I can't really wrap my head around. Uh, it does have a lot of trade aspects, similar-ish to Victoria 3, um, but nowhere near as complex. It seems to be the middle ground for a lot of the uh, Paradox titles. So, the first thing we need to realize is, I believe we start with a um, tributary. We are their overlord. They do not like us very much. They have quite low loyalty to us. They have an actually pretty good opinion. What I want to do is relations actions. I want to improve their opinion over time up to 100. Because we need to get their loyalty high enough uh, that they will be willing to join us in a war. Um, and I don't know where I can see their loyalty stats. Here we go. Uh, they are paying us one manpower. Yes, they're paying us one manpower each month, which does not seem like a lot, but it is for how small we are. We protect them if they're attacked. They should join us in wars. 
Uh, I don't know if they're willing to because of their loyalty at the moment. Yes, their loyalty is very low. Uh, opinion gives plus 21. So if we get it up to 100, I think we just need to get it to 40. Um, and there are a few ways we can do that. So we'll dive into our national overview. And here we can fill up ideas. And what I want to fill up is loyalty for... This is opinion modifier. Integration speed, subject loyalty. That's what I want. Uh, if you look here, we have basically national ideas we can have. And uh, this is what, because of our former government and autocratic monarchy, what we can use. And uh, more of these technologies will unlock as we tech up. Uh, more of these ideas will unlock as we tech up. We'll dive into tech in a second. But we, if we match the type with um, the slot here, we gain this national output, which is uh, national slave output plus 6%, which should give us quite a Eh, it's not a huge amount of money right now, but if we had a lot of slaves, which, because it's a paradox game and it's not real morality, I, I plan on getting them. I, I do quite like slaves in this game. It really helps the tax modifier. Um, it gives quite a bit more money. Uh, we can ignore that, but I, I do want this. We can have a civic idea here. Uh, build cost isn't too bad. National commerce income was really good. And national slave output's really good. We don't have enough slaves right now. I think national commerce would be best although i do plan on building at some point and military ideas as well morale, i think morale of armies is probably the best uh army morale recovery might be all right but let's boost our morale let's get them on side and then actually let's go to our missions so we have a uh, main mission to unify creed uh, Crete, the unification. So, you know, war is the unmistakable black hand that taints everything. Uh, the mission will be considered complete once Crete has been unified into a single state. So we'll start this mission. And what we want to do uh, on completion of this, Grumbling Soldiers, um, which one do we want to go to? We gain a claim on Crete, the entire province. So it means we'll have a claim against everyone. That's what we want to start with. It will cost us 20 of our influence points up here. Uh, influence is generated in a certain way. I'll show you that in a second. This task will be completed on... Yeah. This task will be completed on the 30th of March, 451. So we only have to wait a year for that. Now, uh, when it comes to how we generate our influence points up here, that all comes from our government, and that comes from the offices that are held, and the better these people are at their specific skills... Uh, the more political influence will be given to us. And it also gives other bonuses. Uh, you can see their monthly wage up there. We'd switch them out if we think they're not doing a particularly good job, but we won't do that right now. Um, we'll go into, you know, how to maximize this later on. Um, we have unused trade routes in the capital, and this is a good way to make money, as well as give us benefits. So right now we produce grain and we have wood. But I think what we should go for is probably some precious metals. It'll give more citizen happiness. And we can get that from either Macedonia or the Ptolemaic Kingdoms. I'd rather align myself with uh, the Ptolemaic Kingdom, Egypt, uh, because they're quite close and they're very worryingly powerful. Uh, I also want to import a few other things. Slave happiness. If we get a surplus in the capital, which I think means more than one. Uh, you know, we get plus eight for that. Uh, with wood, we'd get something else. Uh, with wood. Spearman offensive. I don't know if we have any spearmen. With grain, we would get global monthly food modifier up. Uh, I would love to have build cost down, maybe. Sure, discipline, experience, decay, hemp. One minus st stone surplus. Alright, that is all that we can import at the moment. Uh, there are texts that will allow us to import more. Uh, we lack a commander for our two navies. We don't need to worry about that right now. Pretender support. This is someone who is worryingly close to the throne. Uh, we can look more into our family tree in a bit. I don't know who he's, he's related to. He might be related to my family. Um, under characters. All right, there, there we are. Pretty good uh, Marshall score, so that's going to be quite helpful. 
and we have to figure out who our heir is going to be. And there are other family. There are two other families inside of our um, nation. We can absorb more as we conquer some of the city states, but we're going to avoid that for right now. Um, this is who is being supported. I don't know who. I don't know who my my uh, heir is. Succession. Here we go. This is my player heir. Everyone else is supporting someone named Lysidius for now. I, is he part of my family? He is part of my family. They're supporting another member of my family. But uh, they'll probably end up supporting my heir once he reaches of age. He's only one year old right now. I do have a wife. To have two children. Uh, one, one girl and one boy. I think they're twins, apparently. So we have to keep an eye out if we wish to... I'm not going to make him a rival. As he grows up, we can try to build some influence for him. Uh, we want to try to keep our military in our family because you can become disloyal and you... A general is disloyal. and not. It doesn't just cause civil war issues. It does actually cause... Um, it causes some issues when it comes to uh, controlling the army they, they run. So a general who's disloyal will just do his own thing. And that's, uh, that's quite unhelpful in the wars to come. Uh, we have... Several disloyal characters. This man's beard is messed up. Give him free hands. We can bribe. We can make rival. Let's not do anything right now until it becomes more of an issue. Uh, we'll go through invent uh, inventions right now. This is our tech planning. We have eight points to spend. I probably want to go to civic advances. And open up an additional trade route. And there's an additional trade route. And then probably property taxes. Which gives us a national tax modifier. Build time, I don't mind. Build cost. Uh, I think it might be good to go to oratory. If we can get anything that makes us more popular. Loyalty of characters is probably a good idea. Diplomatic relation, reputation plus one, I wouldn't mind that much. And then I think the rest will focus on our martial advances. We have three more points to spend. And we'll just do something to make our army a little bit better. And if we go down here... To... Active Drill. That gives us more discipline. And then once we get to professional training, we can start having an actual professional army called Legions. But we can't do that until I think we unite Crete. We need to be at least a local or regional power to be able to have Legions. So right now we only have levies, if we go to our military screen. And we have, I don't know, a moderately sizable force. 2,500 troops because of our population, which isn't too, too bad. We have two archers, heavy cavalry, heavy infantry, and spearmen as our levies. And that is probably based on professions and business and stuff like that. Uh, I should mention I'm playing with the Invictus mod, which is a bit of an overhaul, but it doesn't really change the game too, too much. Um... It does make the AI a bit smarter, if I remember correctly. So, um, at least that's what it says in the patch notes. And actually, while I'm thinking of that, I would love to save the game. Because I had quite a few crashes. Um, I had one crash, and I'm worried about future crashes. Uh, Gameplay-wise, I would love autosave, and I would love it every half year just to be, sa just to be safe. We'll resume the game right here. Alright, so we can start the game up, I think. Oh, we have an omen we can do. So, I think we own a we own a um, holy site, if I remember correctly. It's this one, right? Yes, we have a holy site. It is Aridine. Um, so Aridine here. Changing days will cost stability and will grant passive effect monthly civilization and monthly ruler popularity gain. I actually quite like that. And because we have the temple, we should be able to put a treasure inside of there. But we don't have any treasures right now. We may end up getting treasures by raiding these other temples. I like the idea of having a uh, ruler population. We, uh, we definitely want some of that stability back. It should grow back over time. We can call in an omen if we want. Uh, manpower recovery speed... Um, Population capacity. Uh, ooh, I don't really... 
integrated culture. I can't get the second level of this, it looks like. Oh, we'll just do... We'll just have a manpower recovery speed. That will be helpful once the war starts and we have to deal with levies. Let's get the game ticking along, just because we we're going to end up wanting um, those claims to come in. And we'll know once the mission finishes that we'll have the uh, claims we need. You can see a little boat sailing around. I do love this game, and I missed it quite a bit. Uh, this is the mercenary army. You'll see them dotted around the map, and you can hire them. They have to go to your territory first to be usable, uh, and they're quite expensive. We're not going to really be able to afford mercenaries to begin with, so we're not going to deal with that. Still a pretender of support. Oh, yeah, that's right. We have a, another import route because we did that uh, technology modifier. I think gemstones would leave to... What are we doing? We're doing precious metals. Maybe another stone. And I think we have a surplus because of that. Yeah. Our build cost is down because of that. Our slave population should be more happy. I mean, they have a minus 30% because they're slaves, but... You know, a happy slave is a, is a loyal slave, I guess. I feel shitty saying that. I think our first move, once we get our vassal here up to a certain level of loyalty, is, um... His loyalty has increased quite a bit. Yes, there we go. Uh, I think over 40 they will start dealing with us. And I don't I don't think the uh, mission has come through yet. Yeah, it's this is it building right here. Once we have those claims, I think we'll move in and we'll probably start with Lapa. And we'll probably start with the western side of our island. And I want to take each piece of this as best I can, as quickly as possible, hoping none of them have allied. My main rival, I think, on Crete... Pause the game real quick. My main rival on Crete is probably... They want an alliance. This is interesting. To unify Crete, what do I need? I think I don't need every piece of Crete for the unification. I want to be able to go to war with them. But having an additional ally in my pocket, I think is going to help out quite a lot. I'm going to accept their offer. Just for now, because um, we're quite small still, and I want to have the troops needed to conquer the rest of the island. Uh -huh. Arcades. No, we are actually going to just decline that. Active Diplomat. Yes, we're just increasing how much these guys love us. That is fine. We do have bad disloyalty. We have a great wonder. We have the Enosis Palace, which I think is part of the uh, labyrinth structure. Um, okay, the Hellenistic city of Lyc Lyctus has deeply offended us. The people we just allied with. They want to provoke war. Okay, but we're allies. We just made an alliance. War in Greece. Okay, this is uh, when the Diodoki all start fighting each other. There's going to be war waging all throughout Greece during this entire period. We can just ignore it for now. It's not going to affect us until someone becomes the hegemon of the area. And they start trying to exert their influence over us. The fact that these guys insulted me after allying with me is madness. Alright, we're allied. Oh, and they're allied with these guys. That's interesting. So, yeah, maybe we don't move against them right away. In a really state of affairs, Kebalos I, Timotheides, I'm sorry if anyone's Greek or speaks ancient Greek, uh, has called together all the leading families from our city, tapping deep into the client network to ensure that a receptive audience is present for his speech. Every favor and debt that I am owed has been remembered. When the appointed hour arrives, raise my hand, calling for silence, he launches into an oration. Yeah, that's the best list. It's me calling for an or uh, oration, giving a magnificent speech entitled The Unruly State of Affairs, arguing that the fractured Crete polit uh, policy is bound for destruction unless we gathered ourselves together as one. Nevertheless, I shall bring peace. Excellent. So this is going to give us claims against everyone. We've done that first mission. I don't want to pay for a second mission quite yet. National unrest plus four. Global monthly food modifiers might be nice for all the war we're going to be doing. Um, if we look over here at trade resources, 
we want to get to the iron before we get legions because once we capture iron we'll be able to make heavy um heavy troops although we should be able to see what um sorry i have to figure out where it is we should be able to see where our um traditions are there we are so what's open to us in military traditions are greek kingdom traditions in greek polisk traditions which I don't think really focuses on any archers or anything like that. A lot of light infantry and cavalry, navy stuff, spearmen discipline. So we might want to focus mostly on spearmen. We don't have a huge heavy infantry uh, policy, but we will be using some of them. So that's fine. I'm actually quite curious. Um, if we integrate other cultures, we'll get access to other ideas. We're not really going to have much in the way of cultures here right now. We're all going to be pretty much uh, Greek, Cretan. Um, so that's fine. We have mission task can be completed. Rationing system is inquiring repetition, making difficult decisions. Okay, we've just started the rationing system. I don't really want to spend any more points. What I do want to do is immediately invade these guys. Over here. So, over here, Kappa. I would love to declare war on you. No one would join us. Who the are these guys? Praesilos. Alright, we still do have backup. They have no allies. That is fine. What we're going to do right now is raise our levies. Under military. Whatever the hell that is. And I want to... We are leading the army, which is excellent. And we're going to march over to where our ally is. You can speed this up just a little bit. Call allies. Okay, it looks like they'll join the war now. We have a low food supply in Crete. Why do we have a low food supply? We have grain. Where is food? Is it just from rationing? Is that what did it? Oh, I feel like such a jerk. We have a positive food income. I, I imagine they probably took it with them to march to war. All right, we won that first battle, which is excellent. And we are sieging this out. By the way, siege works is very similar to, say, Europa Universalis. Uh, until this gets positive, we won't start making progress. Uh, and then once we hit it, we'll have like a maximum um, chance per tick that this goes around to take a settlement. I think most of our people are going to have forts. Uh, so we will be dismantling quite a lot of forts. We have a bad research ratio up here right now, and that's because, and actually I'll show you this, if we go to our population, we have one nobleman. So when we raised all our troops, basically he stopped producing any uh, research. We do want more nobles, they're quite hard to get. There is promotion up the ranks, uh, but we want nobles because we want them to doing research. Our citizens do research and local manpower uh, reserves. Uh, freemen do um, manpower and base tax to a lesser extent. And then base tax is done to a much heavier extent by slaves. Uh, we don't have any tribesmen and they just do kind of crap. You want to integrate them as quickly as possible. We'll keep the ticks going. We're at negative 14, negative 7. Fortifications are pretty low. Siege accumulation is pretty nice. No one's declared war on me yet. It looks like these guys are going to war with someone. I can find out who. Yeah, they went to war with Polythema over here. We'll end up going to war with them shortly. It looks like our low food doesn't matter right now, so that is fine. Uh, Ptolemaeus the First Order, Lagite stirs. Um... And it looks like the Antigonids and uh, Egypt are going to war with each other. I don't care. We have 42% chance to take this each turn. So I don't really know what's going on. Uh, I do know if we use our navy when there's a port, uh, you end up getting much better ticks against someone. Um, so it's almost a 50% chance to take this each time this goes around. Uh, when we invade Cadonia over here, I think we should immediately use our navy to help out with that. They're at war with Sparta. The solicited invasion of the Antigonids. When will it end? 
Can you, uh, can you give me the siege? Please? Please, this is ridiculous. There, come on. Uh, I'm sure there are ways to raise this. It looks like Sparta is going up against our thing up here. I hope to God they don't try to take it for whatever reason. The war is going on. I don't think it's a war against uh, Cadonia for territory. I think it's a defensive war. There we go. So we've gone ahead and we've taken Lapa. Um, so this is the sacking of Lapa since we took basically the fort, the city. Uh, my men have led to a glorious victory during the siege. The enemy flee in disgrace and all is left to decide how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, the spoils are of war are likely to cause those back in Gnosis to admire me greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man can cause problems. I don't think it matters too much because the one man is our king, so I'm fine. We can make let the looting be gentle, and that means he, our, our treasury gains six gold, uh, and he gains, there's a personal source of wealth if we look over here. And that could be used for bribes and all kinds of political things. Uh, let the men roam freely. Uh, Gnosis gains more and I gain more. And the fourth levy of Gnosis becomes loyal to the king directly, which is fine. And Cretan tribesmen are killed, which is not good. And our popularity goes up by five. None shall hide. I don't really want to kill the, that many Cretan tribesmen. And it looks like it's roughly the same amount of prestige. The gold is a little bit better. I don't want to gain cruel. Let the men roam freely. So the siege has been won. We'll pause right here. Uh, because we've taken the only city, it doesn't matter what our war score is. We should be able to sue for peace. And we should... Lap and Crete to Gnosis. And why aren't you saying yes? We need to have one, at least one more positive than negative. Peace offer, months at war. Do they have a second territory I'm not, I'm not aware of? Or did someone join them in the war? Yes, yeah, someone joined them in the war. That's that's why. Okay. I didn't even notice that. All right, we're marching in. Lysimos makes a move. Lysimakos. Uh, despite the being the weakest of the Daidoki, Daidoki states, Thracian satrapy has surprisingly begun an invasion of Antigonid. Yeah, we're going to keep seeing these messages pop up because we're just in the region. Deified a living god and spirit of the nation, Baharabu Kuru surely breathes and bleeds and dies just as any more. Uh, this is in India, which does not really relate to us. So right now we are sieging these guys um, and they're sieging these guys. This is very interesting. We can go smash their army really quickly. I'm curious if I can take... Because I do have a claim against both of them. So if I take this, can I then uh, claim Cadoni at the same time? I might do that. What I would love is... Merge these units together. And I should give them a commander. I want to give them a commander for my family. Uh, and I don't know... Popularity, loyalty, corruption, age... I always go with popularity. Uh, and if I go to my characters... I, he's a pretender. I don't want to give it to him. These are all really pretenders. So we want to give it to the Timotheodius family. Or maybe we don't, just because... Um, maybe we don't want that competition. All right, we're going to give it to this 23-year-old. He'll be the leader of our navy. We are going to need to use naval forces. And there's a way to use the navy to help get this uh, ticking along quite a bit faster. Uh, we should see ship blockading as something that gives us a positive to the siege pips. Enslavement efficiency. That's another thing. Getting enslavement efficiency up would be great. Um for obvious reasons. A ruler is born. A daughter was born to me. Oh, so we have another daughter. And she, be, she should be Narcissa. Uh, in good hands, the ongoing war takes up most of the attention of the Basileus uh, as he leads the armies to a victory. While Gnosis does have bureaucratic momentum, there are many issues that await 
the capable hands of the legitimate mar monarch. In the absence, my consort, my wife, has taken up some of his responsibilities and is doing the best to address this. Excellent. So there's loyalty and some prominence going around. All right, I'm going to pause this for a second. So let's, let's come to the disease of kings. So the leader of Macadon has succumbed to the disease of kings, which I think is gout. Uh, we have a ruler born, so let's get rid of that. Hey, um... Are we just taking, like, insane attrition because we have no food? Yeah. I th think we need you to... Alright. Let's move back to our own territory in the meantime. Can I still... Yeah, okay, so I can take this. I can't take this, but I think we'll just take... Peace off will increase your rank to local power, yes. The Lap and Elite. After a protracted conquest, we have finally routed the Lap and armies and laid waste to their lands. During the sacking of their capital, many important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held important positions in Lap and Bull. N uh, they now languish in our dungeons, awaiting whatever fate we decide for them. They deserve no quarter, this will just raise our popularity. Banish those of class, put the rest to the sword. Important characters will be banished to foreign lands instead of executed. And we lose aggression expansion, which we, uh, this is that uh, up here somewhere, which is not that high at the moment. Imprison the leaders, let the rest disappear. Pass judgment on the important families. Uh, no quarter. We have increased in rank. Um, all kinds of new modifiers have popped up. I don't think we can go into legions quite yet. All right, we have conquered our first territory, and we want to... Bring our troops home. And we'll dismiss our levies when we get there. Uh, is there just a military button to say stand down? Uh, spending all levies will make all levies return to their homes based on the current strength of the levy. Yeah, I'm going to just spend the levies at the moment. So this is on fire. It looks like they only have a fortress. I would love not to have a fortress there. Thank you. And instead, I would love to replace that with... Barracks will give us more manpower. Slave estates. There's like one populace here. <laughs> Probably a farming settlement. Maybe a port. No, because there's going to be such lacking of uh, food in this location. Let's get uh, farming settlement, I think. Yeah. Just to get some population attracted to there and rebuild it. We do not need them to have a fort. I don't want to have to do fort maintenance in all these different locations. Breaking alliances. The following alliance or league members are considering leaving us. I would love for them to leave us. Uh, I want you to return home. Wait a bit before you attack our next chunk of territory. It is probably going to be against Kaidonia up here because they have a second territory. I do want to take as much of the west of the island as possible. But it's going to be 24 months before we can do anything. Uh, another one of our missions can be completed. Probably this one. No, we haven't fulfilled the conditions yet. Provinces importing leather and iron. Um, we could probably start on this. This gains us tyranny and loses us political points, but and increases our war exhaustion, but discipline is better and Hill's combat bonus is better. I think that's probably best. Yeah, we'll start down that route. We still have food shortages in Crete. I don't think we can import any more. In fact, we actually have... We actually don't have enough importation to do all the routes we have. Can I cancel my route with uh, stone? And I would just... Let's just go straight into grain. And we'll import with Egypt still. Increase our relationships. And that should hopefully balance out the amount of food we're losing, right? I think so. I don't know. I'm not particularly good at this game. Um, but hopefully I'll get a little better. Uh, you know, if anyone is a fan of this game in the comments, please let me know. Um, and tell me what to do. And I'll do it like a good, like a good little Basileus. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so time's still ticking along. It said it would take 
several months before our armies are ready to be raised again. No, uh, yeah, okay. It's not going to be available to be raised until 4.53 in October. Discipline in the camps. All right, so we gain five tyranny. Hopefully that decays over time. Yeah, it does. 0.07% uh, decay over time, which is not good. We lose some political influence, but our soldiers become more disciplined, which is excellent for us. Um, morale of armies and manpower recovery speed. I'd love that. And yeah, we completed that right away. And we can do siege work and sappers, which will lower our national tax. I'm going to pause for a second. Um, my best Elias, these guys broke their alliance with us. I'm fine with that. I don't necessarily know if I want to go with the war with them just quite yet. But I do plan on going to war with them. We should see uh, on the western half of the island who they're allied with. Because if, if they're allied with Sparta, I don't want to deal with that. Um... We're going to go into Siege Work and Sappers right now, even though it's going to cost us some political influence. I think we're generating enough that we can deal with it. You do not have an alliance with anyone. You do have Cassius Belli on us. I think you're probably going down the same tree we're going down. So if I was to declare war on you, I think we'd be fine. Uh, can we get the military back? So we cannot get that back until the October. We can raise our army and then declare war, which is exactly what I think we're going to do. It looks like these two former allies are going to war with each other. There's an unused trade route. That is excellent. I We've been having so much problems with food. We have a grain surplus. Uh, I think maybe just getting some fish, livestock. It's spices. And that gives us a local food modifier. Is there... No, we can't get any more spices. Additional wood might help us out. Um, we can't get any more of that. Dates, maybe? No, I think the best thing to do is maybe more fish. Although, if we keep getting grain and continuously build up a relationship with Egypt. I like that idea. Um, I think we're going to move against these guys as quickly as possible. Before they form any new alliances. Because um, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, it said it was going to be ready in October. It's going to be October 20th. We can raise fewer troops than we could beforehand, and I think that's because we've lost a bit of our population. That's fine. We are going to try to take both of these territories in the war. Uh, we'll start our armies out over here. All right, we've well moved past the point. Why don't we go ahead and raise our levies? And of course, it's gonna hamper our research quite a bit, but that is fine. We're going to move right here to Lapa as quickly as possible. Because we can, of course, declare war against you. Over here. Declare war. We can call our ally in. We can take Crete. Declaring war is something the last resort. The act of declaring war will reduce the view of other countries have of you. Do we have a truce? How do we have a truce? Oh, that's right, we do have a truce. God damn it. Well, buddy. You have an alliance. Oh god, you have an alliance with them, don't you? Uh maybe move back over here. Uh you don't have any allies. So I think we're gonna just start our war against these guys. And actually we'll box in who I think is our main um rival. Sieges and Sappers, excellent. Sieges and Sappers is all done. Our national tax will go down, but I'm fine with that because that just means sieges are more effective. Why don't we go ahead and we'll just declare war on you. And I want you to immediately march into our KDs and begin sieging them. And our ally should be joining us soon enough. My best Laius, the Hellenistic local power of Sparta, declared war upon us. Prepare for battle. Okay. I don't know why that happened. Hopefully I don't see any Spartan troops in our area, and hopefully we can destroy this war quickly. Ooh. So... Uh, the 120th Olympiad. Once more, the renowned Olympic Games are due to occur in the sentiment of Olympia, and uh, it is our custom to send the proudest and most young Nosian athletes available. 
So Nanaya, this guy's a member of our family, but he is a pretender, and I don't want to gain have him gain too much in the way of popularity. So we will send Stilpon. Um, yeah, we're paused. Scorn family. A family is scorned if the members hold fewer than the expected number of state jobs. We'll look into that in a second. We have a researcher needed. Ah, so I assume this is why we have a scorned family. Who is the scorned family? The person it person said this guy. Uh, he's terrible. I don't want to give him the job, but I guess everyone's pretty bad at this. Yeah, uh, you can do it, and I'll get rid of scorned families for us. What is this war over? This first person war the war goal was to take Crete. I mean Sparta is better than us. There's no doubt about that. I just need to hope I can take this before they can send. I'm going to try to protect our waters here. Cardonia wants military access. Why do you want military access is my question. Because you're at war with Gortia. Um, I'm going to accept that for now. Uh, the first Gardenia, the war is to fight over Crete. I'm going to decline that offer, actually. I don't want you to march. I, I kind of want my enemies to fight against each other. Uh, also, they have 20,000 troops. It looks like they hired themselves a mercenary company. That's... Th that can't be them. That has to just be them chilling there. I'm going to decline the offer again. I, uh... Mission's been completed. Conquering the Unconquerable. Cannot be completed. So the only one I can complete is this one over here. Gnosis gains a huge population. I lose a bunch of military experience. I lose political influence, which I can afford, and we gain some war exhaustion. Our war exhaustion is not that bad. It goes up to uh, 30, though. Yeah, let's do that. I've not seen Sparta yet, and we do have a ticking war score. All right, there. Enemy's gonna come in right now. Oh no, they're sieging us. Uh, let the men roam freely. We'll pause real quickly because our. Oh, there we go. Two populations were captured and distributed as slaves to Gnosis. It looks like we should be able to take these guys. Uh, better luck next time. We have considerably more troops. There we go, we are victorious. So, what we're going to do is immediately sue for peace, and we are going to take uh, Arcades. No, I want to take Arcades. Is there a reason I can't? The fort in Lycos needs to be occupied for it. I... Oh, that's right, they took Lycos. Okay, I can see why I can't take it. So, I need to take that fort before we can successfully destroy these guys. We're back at full manpower. There we go. And we, uh... The Accursed House of Antipropo. Uh, this is more of a stupid uh, successor state wars. Um, I need you guys to come here now, please. I, I need your help taking this fort. Please, men. Please. please. I need... There we go. I needed 2,000 men to be able to occupy this. All right, so we are now taking down these fortifications. These are separate countries, right? Okay, so that's one unit. These guys are another unit. A discredible dalliance. A young woman named Troyas, of little note until now, has arrived at the palace. And Kos is bearing a baby who she claims is the son of my basilisk. Uh, make this go away. Mother will disappear. Keep it secret, but the child will never want for anything. We lose some legitimacy. I'm fine with that. We have plenty of legitimacy. Spark, I just saw, had a massive navy. 
I don't know where it went. Is Sparta at war with anyone else? Just us. I'm curious what the hell they're doing. I'm also curious if I can just sue for white peace. Uh, we need to get to 47. Or 42, rather. Alright, hopefully we can siege this goddamn fort as quickly as possible, because I am paranoid. Um, the last of the Ariagrapides, one of the fabled veterans of the Silver Shields, the backbone of Alexander's armies, is requesting a place to stay in Gnosis. They have not been often been seen after the betrayed Eumenes by handing him over to Antigonos, as the unit was split up and dismissed by the general. It seems he was banished from my vassal. Yeah, we'll bring him in. Foreigner arrives. Pretender support. Yeah, we have another pretender being supported. Uh, while we're doing this, we can see what traits our characters have. This is our character here. He is... Prominent, which is excellent. Attraction is air. He is... Obsessive perfectionist, which increases our build time and cost. He's suspicious, which means he has more rivals. Uh, rivals are a thing we can do to help our prestige and other stuff. We can declare rivalries with, rivalry with people who are at the same level of power as us. Now our heir, the young Archimedemos, he is firstborn, which gives him prominence. I would love to have some events to make him better, but I don't think they're going to come up yet. He's only six years old, and he's adorable. He'll be our king eventually. These pirates? Is there a gigantic pirate force here? That's interesting. Um, I'm going to move my navy back to my capital. It's because I'm worried about these pirates now. We've almost taken uh, Lyktos, and once we do, we will be the largest, uh, largest kingdom. We are back into the game. We had a small crash. I want to move these guys back in here. I don't know how far back we've gone. Are we still sieging these guys? Our right, discredible dalliance. Uh, yeah. Keep the secret. Child won't want for anything. And a quick save as well. I have this set to buy yearly saving. So that should be quite helpful for us. Uh, the last of the these guys. Alright, this is the same event we had last time. However, now he is... Um, now he's a different looking character. That's fine, he can join us. He's a prominent citizen. Pretender support, that's fine. We have won the siege. So, what we're going to do is... We have 100%. We're going to sue for peace. We're going to take the entirety of Crete. And there we go. And I think our enemies deserve no quarter. This will get us our popularity back. We don't need more families at the moment. Although I think we will spare some families later on. Just to widen the pool. Go ahead and march this army back. I don't know necessarily if I want to dismiss my levies. Even though it's bad for research. We have a terrible research rate right now. And the reason is, we're currently at war with Sparta, even though they haven't actually invaded us yet. Squeezing every last drop, our recent gains in the field have been staggering, but have come at a deadly cost to our men. It's acknowledged that we're running low on manpower, no we're not. But for how small we are, we're not really running low on manpower. Realizing the gravity of the situation uh, has made the unpopular decision to send soldiers to the marketplaces gathering anyone who looked capable of holding a spear. Yeah. We gained a massive um, manpower boost, I think. Which I don't think matters because we are at maximum. Uh, xenophobia. Heated debates in the court are not uncommon, especially where so many prominent members of society are involved. Lately, a wave of xenophobia has swept across Gnosis, resulting in foreign values being regarded with distrust. All in accordance at today's debate agreed, however, that Sostratos Parisides crossed the line today when he accused me of indulging in the barbaric Dobonian practices. I don't even know who the hell the Dobonians are. I can turn the other cheek. 
which means he gains I gain wise which is finesse national citizen output which is not too bad a monthly statesmanship or I can gain rash which is terrible but I don't lose as much stuff that's fine I'd rather gain a trait it looks like the Antigonids are sieging Pella which is the Macedonian cat oh crap okay the Antigonids are destroying them the war is turning quite interesting but you know ladies and gentlemen I think this is a good stopping off point We've made our first big headways in here. I don't know if our levies have increased at all. I was kind of hoping they would. Uh, maybe they will if we give them time to refresh. But I'm not willing to drop down the levies at the moment. I think we'll call it here and we'll continue next time. You know, I think we're close. I think next episode I can take these guys out, these guys out, and then we can deal with these two. So I've been No More Worlds, thank you so much for joining me, and bye for now.